Project Guru. 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 Svijem privijet, slavi Zak Novak na radio stanci Novorusija Rocks. Welcome to Novorusija Rocks radio station in downtown Donetsk, Project Guru. Guru. Happy holidays, my brother. Thank you so much for all the hard work you do. Andre, happy holidays to you and my lovely co-host. Please say hello to Novorusija and the world. Happy holidays to you, Natasha. Hello, Novorusija. Hello, world. Happy holidays. Yes, happy holidays, but there is some bad news. Christmas today is canceled. Why, Natasha? Because F-16, Turkish F-16 jets, fired on Santa Claus. How sad. All right, serious folks, let's get to the news. Anonymous have declared war on Turkey for supporting ISIS. Leaderless hacktivist group Anonymous has taken responsibility for a recent major cyber attack on Turkey and have claimed they will continue waging war on the country's internet service due to their belief that the Turkish government is helping ISIS. A distributed denial of service DDoS attack on Turkey's internet between 14th and 21st December took around 400,000 websites offline according to Turkish media after they were overloaded with huge amounts of traffic. The attack which was reportedly the biggest in Turkish history. In a video apparently produced by anonymous linked hackers, a computer-generated voice said, as many of you have heard, Turkey is supporting Daesh, which is ISIS, by buying oil from them and hospitalizing their fighters. We won't accept that President Erdogan, the leader of Turkey, will help ISIS any longer. The news media has already stated that Turkish internet has been the victim of massive DDoS attacks. Dear government of Turkey, if you don't stop supporting ISIS, we will continue attacking your internet, your root DNS, the foundation of Turkey's internet, and your banking system. After the root DNS, we will start to hit your airports, military assets, and private state connections. We will destroy your critical banking infrastructure. Stop this insanity now, Turkey. Your fate is in your hands. At the time of the attacks, there was speculation that the hackers responsible could have been acting on behalf of the Russian government after the Turkish missiles downed a Russian fighter jet over the Syrian border in November. However, Anonymous has performed a number of high-profile operations in recent months, taking down ISIS-linked websites and Twitter accounts and releasing the names and personal information of around 1,000 alleged Ku Klux Klan members. Past anonymous DDoS attacks have also disabled websites belonging to a number of government and major companies around the world. The latest declaration of war from anonymous appears to be part of the ongoing Operation ISIS, an operation which has been attacking the terrorist group's presence on the internet since the start of the year. Turkey has long been accused of supporting ISIS, with Russian President Vladimir Putin labeling the government accomplices of terrorists after the jet was shot down. Ukrainian junta, Guru, listen to this, and Dima. Ukrainian junta parliament allows foreign troops in military drills for 2016. The Ukrainian parliament, the Vekhovna Rada, has allowed foreign troops to participate in the country's military exercises next year. The draft law has been submitted by the Nazi Ukrainian president, Petro Poroshenko. A total of 239 MPs voted in favor of the decision on Friday, today, above the required minimum of 226 votes. The adoption of the law will ensure the implementation of tasks in the sphere of security and defense in the entire context of fulfilling the priority uh, foreign policy of the state. An explanatory note reads, the law will also increase the efficiency of implementing national programs on developing Ukraine's armed forces and allow boosting financial injections to the national economy due to providing units of other states with goods or services. Ukraine parliament allowing foreign troops within their military drills for 2016. Madness. Okay, let me bring in my lovely co-host, Natasha. Uh, She will talk to us about the difficult and horrific situation over the last 24 hours by the Kiev junta regime. Ukrainian junta fighters shell suburbs close to the front line in Donetsk and Gorlovka, according to the Defense Ministry of the DPR. The Ukrainian side started shelling the positions of the DPR in Spartak, to north from Donetsk, Zaitsevo, northern suburb of Gorlovka and Donetsk airport at about midnight. The shelling lasted about two hours. In regards to the information coming in, the enemy opened the fire from Pesky Opetna Jovanka. They used mortars, grenade launchers and small arms fire. The northern and western suburbs of Donetsk were shelled by 120mm caliber mortars. 
Ukrainian junta fighters shelled the village of Trudovsky in the Petrovsky district at about 7 a.m. today, and the village of Spartak was shelled at about 8 a.m., it was reported to the agency. The junta battalions shelled uh, from positions in Marinka and Opetnaya, firing with mortars 120mm caliber and small arms. Uh, be reminded that Kyiv authorities agreed with DPR authorities to implement total ceasefire regime in Donbass and withdraw armament on the 1st September in Minsk. However, Nazi Ukrainian fighters constantly breaking the ceasefire and bombing the DPR territory, and there has been an escalation in December. Moreover, the last meeting in Minsk on 23rd December, Ukrainian junta ignoring the agreements of the ceasefire regime. The Ukrainian side is shelling populated districts in the DPR more often with the use of heavy armament. Curfews and sieges of Kurdish towns continue in northern Kurdistan, that is south-southeast of Turkey, as Turkish state forces intensify attacks against the local population. Eight people have been killed on the 23rd of December in three towns of Kurdistan. Police special operations teams fired on a family home in the Kerboran district of Mardin, which has been under siege for 13 days and killed two civilians from the same family, Yatsim Kilic, 67 years old, and his daughter, Sabata Kilic, 28, were killed in the attack, while three other people from the same family were wounded. Also also three more civilians killed by the state forces in Sizre. The siege in Sirnak Sizre district has entered its 10th day. Thousands of soldiers, junta soldiers, and police continue attacking the areas of self-governance. Unable to enter the neighborhoods where people are resisting, state forces continue murdering civilians by shooting at people from armored vehicles patrolling the streets. Father of five, Dikran Sayatsa was killed by police gunfire in the Sur neighborhood of Sizre. In another incident, 50-year-old Asima Assad died after her house uh, in, in Nur neighborhood was hit by a tank shell today. People managed to take the bodies of the two civilians to Caesar State Hospital morgue only by waving a white flag as they carried them to an ambulance outside the curfew area. 55-year-old Adila Karuduman was also shot dead by special operations police in front of her door in the Kudi neighborhood. The woman's body reportedly remains on the street due to ongoing fire and prevention of ambulances access to the scene by police. Also, a civilian shot by police in Cizre dies. Civilian Lufto Akskoy, who was shot by police at Caesar four days ago, has died. Akskoy was heavily wounded as a result of gunfire by Special Operation Police in Caesar District on 19 December. The man was in an intensive care unit in uh, Cermak State Hospital since the incident. Akskoy's body is being held in the hospital morgue. Also, attacks by police claim another civilian life in Sur. The curfew in Sur District of Ahmed has been ongoing for 22 days. Youth protesting onslaught by Turkish state forces blocked Melik Ahmed Street this evening while clashes erupted as youths responded to the attack. Tear gas canisters fired by police fell into the house on Otil Street causing the death of asthma sufferer 7 year old Salil Bagil. People rushed to the scene and seeing the incident and took Bagid's body outside the house in a blanket. Police prevented people from taking the man's body from the area and didn't allow access for an ambulance, causing the man's death. Another youth killed by state forces in Sur. In another incident, a youth by the name of Mesut Seftiktek was killed by police in Hazrili neighborhood late this evening. Reports from the area say the police are not allowing Seftiktek's family to take the youth's body from the scene. Long live the PKK, long live the resistance. Andre, look at this. Shakashvili living in a fantasy world blames Russia for turmoil in Odessa. Accusations of inciting separatism in the southern Ukraine city of Odessa, voiced by Odessa region governor Mikhail Saakashvili against Russian presidential aide Vladislav Surkov, have nothing to do with reality, Russian foreign ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova said Thursday. We have noticed such accusations, Zakharova said. In general, we are trying to seldom pay attention to what Saakashvili said says, as it is dangerous to your health. Accusations against Surkov of inciting separatism have nothing to do with reality. These accusations are substantiated and are based on myths and fantasies, she said. It is not the first time when we hear from Ukrainian officials such accusations. 
I would like our Ukrainian colleagues to treat such topics more professionally, Sakharova said. The diplomat did not give any additional characteristics to Sakharovsky, as she said she believes this loud and flamboyant statements were meant to distract attention from the main problem, the difficult social and economic situation in the country and a number of other important issues. Such statements are made out of internal fear he has had since 2008. We objectively consider such accusations fictitious. That earns our program, folks. Everybody, please be safe. I stress, be safe. Happy holidays to everyone. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. And it's not true. Santa is still alive. He did not get shot by an F-16 Turkish uh, uh, jet airliner, although we don't trust the Turks anymore. Everyone, happy holidays. See you all soon. Bye-bye.